Mesdames et Messieurs, bonjour. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Uh, for those who have just joined us, um, welcome to uh, this webinar about how to make the perfect croissant. Um, we're here with Julien today. Julien is the head patisserie of uh, King Street Bakery, Mika Brasserie, Mika Patisserie and Montrachet. Some of you may remember uh, Julien because uh, he was on Masterclass last year when uh, Shannon was demonstrating um, the famous dessert that he's been working on, so congratulations. Maybe we'll steal the recipe from you today, which we <laughs> couldn't at the time, but... Why not? <laughs> um, it's um, part of the French life. We've been talking a lot about the bread just um, before, but croissant is something that's absolutely fascinating people. Um, it's something that's part of our life. There's a lot of questions about how to make the croissant. So uh, Julien has been working uh, for many years uh, with Le Nôtre. He worked five years in Paris and two years in South of France, where you were um, head of um, the patisserie there. Um, Le Nôtre, as you may know, um, had people working for him, like Julien, Pierre Hermé, Alain Ducasse. So there's a few of them who have become famous now. Um, it's the person who also created the Concorde and the Opera Cake. So uh, I'm sure he's learned from the master and he's going to be making a small revolution here in Brisbane with all these petitories. So um, we want to know everything about croissant. So maybe I'll just let yes. you talk now. Okay. Uh, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Julien. I'm from Paris and I moved uh, three years ago to Brisbane and worked with uh, Shannon Kellan. And I became the head pastry chef of the company. And we start by a small bakery and uh, open another one a little bit bigger and another one huge and like central kitchen production and pastry school, kitchen school, and a lot of events coming after this uh, virus, I hope soon. Yeah. And but I think that's it. Yeah. OK. I think uh, he's not ready to stop anytime soon. So yeah. we'll eat more and more of these um, wonderful pastries. All right. So do you want to tell us a bit about the croissant? And yes. is Australian people do eat croissant here? Yeah, Australian people eat a lot okay. of croissant, more with filling inside, like I mean, cheese croissant and almond cream croissant, but eat a lot of croissant. Okay, yes. so not the traditional dip in the coffee in the morning and have mm, not the same. at the top? No, no okay. not really the same, but so, yeah. there are still a lot of people enjoy like normal croissant. So yeah. do you think people might try to make their own croissant at home? I've heard some people uh, did, I know someone yeah. at home who did. For, to be honest with you, is bit difficult to make croissant at home. I'm going to show you how I make croissant by hand and explain you about the butter, the flour and everything. Uh, even for me, it's going to be a bit hard because we got like big machine for doing that still with someone behind, but uh, the quantity we are making, we can't make, make by, by hand, it's not possible. And I'm going to show you. So um, just to get started, the, do you start with puff pastry or do you, what do you start with? Do you have a special croissant oil that you Yeah, croissant oil is kind of puff pastry with less term and it's the same, but there are yeast inside. Puff pastry, there are no yeast inside. Okay. That's the same thing with so a lot tell of us lace. How you make it. And I'm going to show you how to make uh, it. I'll move it. I'm just going to move that piece a bit. And I, I can explain you first uh, the recipe of the croissant dough I'm going to make today. It's my own uh, recipe. It's the same croissant we make uh, in my car, King Street Bakery. I use uh, 1 kilo 600 grams of flour. You need to find, it's, it's difficult to find good flour on the supermarket. You need to find the flour with uh, enough protein inside, a high, high level of protein, I mean. Uh, otherwise, Otherwise, you can use like normal flour, but it's better to find a good flour. You put your cold water, that's 900 grams of cold water, around 19 degrees will be fine for mixing. 240 grams of sugar, three, uh, 32 grams of salt, 80 grams of milk powder, 120 grams of butter, just normal butter, it's good, it's just for the first part of the dough. 40 gram of yeast, and in my recipe, we put 160 gram of sourdough. If you don't have sourdough, just put 45 grams of yeast instead to 40 grams and no sourdough. But 
if you put sourdough inside, you're going to have a better taste at the end. And once this part of the dough is made, you're going to pour inside one kilo of butter. Like we use French butter, but it's same. It's going to be difficult to find French butter in Australia. That means use the better quality of butter you can find. And with the high level of fat, we use 82 grams, 82% uh, of fat inside. Uh, and now I'm going to show you the first part of the dough I made yesterday because the first part need to be made around 20 hours before for have a good rest and stay at three degrees. The fermentation is going to start a little bit, but not too much. But you need to do that, otherwise it's not good. Just um, uh, first question coming yes. up. Are you happy to share your recipe with our viewers today? Of course. Today? Okay. So it's already you know, my own recipe. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is the French butter. It's, so you put French butter in yeah, your Yeah, uh, if you want to see, it's from Lettrie du Pont Morin. So it's, it's a beurre sec de tourage, which means it's yes. a dry butter. It's especially made for croissant? Or? It's especially made for croissant and puff, and it's dry butter because you're going to work a lot uh, with the butter inside of your dough. And we need so a butter uh, don't melt too fast mm. for have a nice shape and can work enough with this butter. And okay. uh, yeah, you can ask like probably to French supplier, maybe you can have French butter, but just try with a uh, good quality of butter. To be honest, the quality of butter in Australia is not the best. Probably find butter from New Zealand is a bit better and just work with that. Try with what you can find at home. This is the first part of the dough I made yesterday. It's uh, cold and I put in the fridge. I'm going to make like rectangle bit bigger of the size of the butter and I'm going to put the butter inside and close the door and start to laminate the, the croissant dough. Okay. You need just to make yeah, a bit bigger rectangle. Put your butter inside and just close the door like this. That's a lot of butter. It, it's <laughs> one kilo of butter for three kilo, uh, 200 grams of dough. And is that three. a normal croissant or is that a croissant beurre? It's like, yeah, the butter croissant. Okay, so that's the good one. And put some flour underneath and on the top, but not too much. More flour you're going to add. Oh, it's not the best, yeah. There have been lots of questions about the flour when we did the bread. Do you have any recommendation about the flour you picked? Just white flour? Yeah, uh, white flour, 100%, but uh, with the maximum of protein inside. Maximum uh, protein. We use a special brand from Maori. It's named, the name is Victory Flour. Okay. I don't think you can find that good works, but I think you can find, find a good flour from Loki Flour. At and, yeah, we, you yeah. can find Loki yeah. Flour. Yeah. And once you put the butter inside, you're gonna just do like this and start to make a bigger square for start your first turn. The first turn will be a double turn, and I will show you the double turn once it is. A day do you make here? Uh, we are making around probably 400 croissants because we are doing some wall set with okay. two shop. Yeah. And we are doing a lot of danishes, pain raisin, pain chocolat, and a lot of different shapes of croissants. So you're the head pâtissier. Yes. Um, what is your number one um, seller? Mm. What do you sell the, the most? Uh, it's the Almond croissant. Almond croissant is number yeah. one. It's number one before the I mean cheese croissant and before the plain croissant. Yes. Okay. Mm. That's that's a bit sad for French people. Usually for almond croissant, we just use all croissant from the day is not selling. 
and we just cut, put syrup and put almond cream and bake yeah. again. We don't lose the croissant. And here in Australia, we are making fresh croissant for making <laughs> almond croissant. It's like the ham and cheese croissant. It's we same. usually do that when we've got nothing to eat exactly. and you get the toilet croissant. That's, that's a, bit, a bit sad for French people. But it's yeah, but it's enough. good. Yeah. It tastes good. So. And in terms of patisserie, what um, do Australian people like? Is it more chocolatey or more fruit or more? Fresh fruit, yes. Fresh fruit? In terms of pastry, like fruit tart, yes. And chocolate eclair, yes, yeah. I think. That's okay. yeah, lemon tart, classic one. Have you made anything special for Bastille Day today? Yes, we, have, the... we make uh, Saint Honoré. It's the the boss of the baker and the pastry in France. Mm. Yeah, that's classic. So what is, yeah, okay, so we're going back to the croissant. Okay, once you get enough big size of rectangle, you just fold small part. If you think there are too much flour, take out the flour always. Second part, that means there are small pieces here, big pieces, here, and fold again. Like this. This is the double turn. And after that, put in the fridge, rest around 30 minutes, and you can make your simple turn after this one. Uh, I already make one with a double turn, and I will show you the simple turn. So with a normal croissant, how many turns do you do? Like, do you have to go like a hundred times or do you just do a single turn, a double turn and that's it? Yes. Ah. You can, usually if you work fast and your butter it's not too cold, you can do double turn and simple turn. Yeah. Just rest one hour and you can just laminate uh, enough longer and cut your croissant and make your shape. Okay. So it has to be in the fridge. You don't leave them at room temperature. No, never, never, never. 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 Okay. Yeah. And same. This is the the croissant dough with double turn. I'm gonna make the same, but show you the simple turn for this stuff. Yeah. The only thing it's very important. Can I show the camera? The when I, when yeah. I fold just before the dough, it was on this way, the the pattern. Mm -hmm. And now I turn on this way. That thing is opposite way. Okay. So do you do all the dough the day before and yes. you leave them overnight? Yeah, the first part of the dough needs to be made 20, 20, 24 hours before. Yes. Okay. So you have croissant on the shelves at 7 o'clock in the morning, what time do you get here? Yeah, forget yeah. croissant. Oh, we start very early for making, baking, proving and making croissant, of course. But it's the same than the bread. We need one day before to okay. start to make the dough. We can make on the morning, but we need to start around 12 and do the two turns, roll up the croissant and improve the, uh, and prove the croissant like two, three hours at 28 degrees mm. and bake it. So did you say 12? That means midnight. Yeah, yeah, yeah midnight. Oh. Yeah. So you don't have a life when you are <laughs> here, do you? Yeah, no. <laughs> Usually we, we, we are we making croissant one day before and just put in the prover and when you arrive in the morning you just need to glaze and put in the in the oven bake it. Mm. You can start a bit later than in night. Yeah, best chef, baker, it's yeah. Very early shift. <laughs> so, do you have a lot of people in your shift to make 400 croissants for the rest? Yes. We have a big team. Cool. Now for this one, we're going to make exactly the same size than the one before, but for one turn. With the machine, it's more easier. 
Yeah, so you don't do that. Exactly. No, no, no. You, not you by the machines to exactly. do that. Exactly. Okay. But I find we have two or eighteen, and it's yeah. doing by itself. Okay. And you can get the size you want. That sounds a bit more human to me. <laughs> yeah, for making atom, you you're gonna do like this. So that's what you call your single test? Yes. Okay. So there's basically, compared to the bread, no proofing time. Yeah, there are proofing time. After, okay. after. after the second turn, yeah. after the simple turn, but the last turn, I'm going to do it. Okay. We're going to rest one hour normally. Right. And after that, cut the shape you want, cut the shape of the croissant, if you want mm -hmm. croissant, okay. and prove them two or three hours around 28 degrees. Yeah. Okay, so I'll still be here at six o'clock. Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> the simple turn is not like before, it's same size here than this one. We just fold one time and the other part on the bottom and this, and that's it. This is the simple term. After that, put in the fridge for one hour. You know it's too soft for work like this. I'll say I already prepared something ready to go. And this is the last step of the croissant dough. Choice the, the the size the, the larger and the longer you want for the crust. This longer it's enough long for making croissant. And you need to do the same. Get the good size around probably this and cut the triangle and roll it. Please feel free to ask any questions um, in the chat on the right hand side of your screen. We do have a couple of questions um, arriving, so I will keep them for the end, but make sure you do um, so that when Julian is finished, we can ask him all the questions about how to make croissant. Sorry, I don't speak enough, but it's a bit hard to. No, that's to do okay. Croissant. But can I, can you're going to you? see when you're going to try at home. <laughs> it's fine. Um, did you cut this one to shape? Sorry? Did you cut this one to shape? Yeah, this was like bigger block before. Okay. Normally, we got this size, and once you got the, the good longer, you, you, you just fold, yeah. cut the middle. Okay. And when you cut croissant, you cut two by two, not only. I, I'm going to cut You're one by one. Yeah. No, uh, I'm going to do just one by one like this. Yeah. But when we are making 400 croissant, we just fold like oh, this once yeah. it's done and cut triangle. That means you get two croissants by two okay. croissants. But this is the good longer. You can do longer, but this is enough. Mm. Um, there's a question from Alexia asking when you make pain au chocolat, yes. chocolate croissant, is that the same recipe? Yeah, yeah exactly the same. Ah, so you do the same thing? Yes, just the oh. shape is different and you just put uh, chocolate inside. Yeah. You put a special chocolate, don't melt when you bake it, but it's exactly the same exactly the dough, same. yes. Okay. Cecile is asking uh, what is the size, so that would be about 20 the centimeters. Size is, it's the, yeah. the, what, what, do you, what you want doesn't matter. Okay. We cut yeah, around 20 centimeters and we are doing a croissant around 90 grams. They are 90. not really a side, but okay. need to get 90 Because I did try to make croissant. I did not uh, help Olivier trying to make croissant one day. And I cut them too short, they were ridiculously tiny. Yeah, of course. So that doesn't really work. But so that one is about 20 centimeters width. Yeah, about. also we got uh, something like this. We just ah. can make That's it. That's the trick, you're cheating. That, and you get the same size for both okay. of, for so that all of them. So that's really about um, 20 centimeters here, and that's about six. Yeah, uh, it's going to be a bit longer. A bit longer, yeah. okay. I'm trying to answer Cecilia's questions. Do you know, Julien, how many calories there are in one croissant? <laughs> none. I'm sure there's I prefer, none. I prefer, don't know this answer. No, there's none. It's good calorie anyway. Yeah, there are ifs, ifs, 
it's not like there's no sugar the, added to it the so it's good. never zero zero calories no. <laughs> if you want something good it's difficult to find without calorie Liz was asking before is the butter that you've put in at room temperature or come straight from the fridge uh, the, the butter the, you put inside when you did the, the butter I take out but not in the hot uh, room. The room we're working uh, for the croissant, it's at 20 degrees. Wow, that's cold. It is cold. Mm. The, and we keep the butter outside at 12 degrees. 12 degrees. It's not too strong. Of course, yeah, that's a good question because you need to have the, the same, the dough need to be the same um, than the butter. I mean, uh, when okay. you touch the yeah, dough. Yeah. Yeah, texture, not, not, ah, not okay. too soft. Yeah. And if you have your, your, your butter a little bit soft and your dough a little bit soft, that's perfect. Okay. If your butter is strong, it's like from the fridge straight away. Doesn't, yeah. Okay. The butter is going to go outside of the dough. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's a very good question. I forget to say that. Yeah. yeah. I think we are almost good. There's another question from Mary. She wants to know when you do home baking, do you recommend adding flour to the butter when you're making the uh, beurage? Oh, yeah, if you have uh, normal butter, you can add a little bit of flour in your butter, okay. but mix on the mixing dough and then make a square with your butter. That's when you're going to have like butter a little bit drier, but don't put too much flour inside. Okay. It's the same. Always when we add flour, even for work like this, it's, it's not the best. Always take it away. Less flour, yeah. it's always the best. And That's for, the tricky bit. Yeah. For cut croissant, you need to do just like triangle, in the size you want. I think like this. Let me show you okay. in front of the camera. If you think your base will be too small, you just cut a little bit the middle. And when you roll it, you can just do like this, and you can get a nice shape of croissant. Whoa, okay. And well, you can see, I don't know if you <laughs> see, you can see the lays inside the dough with the butter. They are like, not thousand, but they are a lot. Yeah, I don't um, know if Judy, you see it on the camera. Judy wants to ask how many layers are there in a classic croissant? Uh, I don't think I've got the answer, but uh, Is that going to help if we show that? Yeah, we can show okay. this is inside the I don't the know process. if you can see this. I, I don't think if I can count, but yes, I know uh, if you're doing puff, yeah. you are doing around five or uh, six turns, yeah. simple turn, and you should get a little bit more than 1,000 legs. That's mean I think we are, I'm not sure for the answer, but we are around probably 30 legs. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is a lot. Um, Diane wants to know, or Diane wants to know why some croissants are more flakier than others. I think it depends on uh, how it's laminated and how it's the uh, foil. Okay. Yeah. So every um, pâtissier will have his own way of doing it. Well, it's almost similar than this for making croissants. It's always this. And after, you need to prove that around two or three hours at 28 degrees. Mm. At home, it's of course different. That means you need to put the tea tabs on the top with a little bit of water and for don't have a croissant dry on the top. Mm. If it's not dry, that's perfect. And one is looking it's good. proven off, mm. just egg wash it and put in the oven. I would say around 180 degrees for 15, 80 minutes, just check. Don't open the oven if you think it's not enough baked, otherwise it's going to be flat. Just bake enough until you get a nice color. And that's it. It's it's not very easy to make croissant, but it's the same than the bread. You need to do a few times and you're going to learn. But I, give, I already gave you the recipe yeah. and I show you the way for making croissant. Someone is asking you a recipe, which we're going to put in the chat now. Uh, how many croissants would that make? Uh, normally, we get around 42 croissants, 42, 45. 42 40. with yes. that recipe? No, this, the recipe I gave you is yes. half of this one. 
Okay, yeah, 21 months. Yeah, but I don't gonna get 21 months no, because no, no, it's no, a bit no. bigger. Normally, yeah. I go until three, mm, three centimeters and this is around five, I think. It's a bit bigger. But by hand, it's a bit difficult. So I'm gonna let you do some more. You want to try to roll one poisson? Yeah, I can do that. I'm gonna just um, see if we can share the recipe. Um, okay, you do it and then um, just when you... take like this mm -hmm. and just roll like this. It's too easy. Yeah, that's too easy. Yeah, it's when you do it all the time, I'm sure it's easy. Yeah. Okay, that's for sure. It's mine. Nice. So some people I've seen in um, the bakery, um, you do have um, the croissant on that covered with um, a red tint or a dark uh, chocolate yeah. tint. Yeah. How do you do that? You can do that. Uh, in Paris, when, they've got them everywhere now. <laughs> when you make your first base of the dough? No. Uh, okay, I, give you, I gave you already the, the dough, but I don't tell you how long I need to mix the dough. Cool. That means you need to mix the dough first speed on eight minutes and probably second speed on three minutes you should get dough around 25 degrees and after that that's when you can start to make like red color or black color you just to, to you just take a part of the dough a small part put color inside of course like black if you want black and just mix a little bit more and you, you're going to get black color. This part of the dough you keep in the fridge until you do you finish your double and single turn and just before you laminate for the last, just before you roll for the last, um, uh, just before cutting the croissant, you just add your color, croissant color on the top of that just before if I want to do color, I should put black color on the top before I do the last turn. And when I cut it, the top will be black. And yeah, it's it's pretty easy to do that. It's not difficult. I've just taken a few photos of a close up because you can definitely see the layers really well. So we'll try yeah, to put yeah, them yeah, in the course. chat. Yeah. Um because it's nice. quite impressive uh, yeah. just to watch how thin they are. So I've just taken photos, we might upload them onto the chat. There is a question from someone who wants to know, in the recipe you talk about sourdough, what is it? Probably some uh, sourdough, it's exactly the same. I use the sourdough from the baker. Uh, it's uh, like same, only if you want to start, you just put one apple for spoil and add some uh, apple juice, uh, whatever you want. and. You need to refill. You need to feed every day. Uh, but if you don't have, just add a little bit of yeast. Will be fine. Yes. Yeah, will be fine. Because starters, it's something you need to. Uh, you you should make for making bread and always keep alive. And if you do have, just use it. If yeah. not. Yes, it's good. a lot of work because you do have to feed your sourdough every day. So unless yeah. you make bread every day or every two yeah. days, um, exactly. it's probably not worth doing it just for that recipe, just yeast for yeah. the thing. Yeast would be fine. Yeah. Yeast would be really so fine. once you get these little um, things waiting, how long do we have to wait for? <laughs> yeah, just put on the tray and wait like three hours, 28 degrees. It's enough cool and you can bake it. So how long do you leave them like that? No, no, you don't leave outside. You just put on the tray. If you, for us, we just tray up when when it's done, and put in the prover. And the day after, I just start to prove uh, for two or three hours, and we bake it in yeah. the morning. And that's it. Someone was asking you, uh, why did you cut at the? Um, for get a little bit large. So that it's you, larger. Is, and it's if bigger. you want, you can keep without cutting the middle. Yeah. If your shape is enough large, just don't cut the middle. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah, I cut it for get a bit larger. Okay, we've got a question from Michael. Um, how are we going to talk about France and Italy now? What's the difference between a French croissant and the Italian cornetto? Mm. Do you know it? Yeah, I know what's it, but 
I don't think I'm gonna answer that because I'm not sure exactly what is the door of the cornetto. Or I'm I'm not I'm not sure on the person for that. Yeah. Mm. Um, Sophie is asking, so she's very young, you're very young, Sophie, by the way, <laughs> if there's a hashtag they can use to share their results on Instagram. For me? The, for them, so that they can show you and you can tell them what they're doing wrong, probably. Uh, Maybe use our hashtag, it's uh, Le Festival BNE for yeah. Brisbane. So Le Festival BNE and, and we'll pass them on to Julia yeah, and you easy. will uh, tell you what to change, if yeah. there's anything to of change. Course. Just record you and show me the, the video and I will let you know. Yeah, I think we have um, answered most of our questions. Uh, so the end result, the size of it, what it is now and what it's going to be at the end? Uh, it's going to be like this. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's... Proof um, double size. Yeah, completely. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's doubling. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you've got a good recipe for 21 of those. Uh, Judy wants to know if we don't have a bread proofer, can we just leave the dough in yes. the oven without no, no, turning no, 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 it on? I, I would say not in the oven. I would say just leave outside with tea tail on the top for don't uh, have the, yeah tea tail and okay. like uh, just a bit wet. A bit wet, yeah. Just yeah, for put on the top and. Yeah, of course, if it's 12 degrees at home, it's not enough, but around 28 degrees, 25 degrees, it should yeah. be enough for four, mm -hmm. like two, three hours. Now, I, I would say oven will be too strong for... Okay, food, even if it's turned off? No, nah, nah. nah, I would say no. Nah. Okay. Nah, because if you put in the oven and turn off, I think you're gonna, for sure, you're gonna get a, a crust on the top. And once you get the crust, the croissant will never poop. Okay. Yeah. Um, when we do bread or croissant at home, it's a big dictatorship. If anyone opens a window or a door, we're all dead because there's wind yeah. going through the house. Bread. We've got a Queensland. Is that for bread? Yes, for sure. Yeah. Uh, what for about croissant, croissant, that's okay. <laughs> we can leave the door open there. Thank you. <laughs> not, not, not with a lot of wind inside of the house, of course, but you can still open the window. Okay, fine. so but it's for not bread, super it's fragile. really important yet. Yeah don't have any air or something yeah it's okay. very important but if you leave the croissant like this it's, it's going to dry for sure that means once it's done if you don't want to use you can put like this in the freezer mm -hmm. if you got too much too many put in the freezer and every morning when you need just take mm -hmm. out oh, half an hour before oh no, no. longer it's better it, every night before you go to sleep just take out some put like six in the fridge and on the morning take out Prove like two or three hours, and you can bake on the morning. Two or three hours. Yeah. Then you have to wake up early. <laughs> yes. Same for um, us. So yeah. you wouldn't freeze them half baked. You know how you can buy semi baked yeah. croissant. I think if you have to to freeze that, yeah, freeze like this. Before freeze like this. Yeah. Okay. And if you have you you're gonna make croissant just for putting the freezer, just put a little bit more yeast because the yeast gonna die. In the, in yeah. the freezer. Yeah. In the freezer. Okay. And if you want, you can just keep in the fridge. If your fridge is in, of course, just keep in the fridge for two days maximum. Otherwise, it's not it's yeah. not good. But yeah, if you want to keep longer, put in the freezer like this is better. You can prove and put in the freezer proof, but the the finish will be not really nice. Um, there's another question from Lynette about when you cut the top, um, so the, the slit at the top is um, for the shape and you explained that, but does it ensure the croissant can breathe better in the oven or no? No. It's more aesthetic? Yeah. Okay, all right. If you have any other questions from Benjamin, uh, please send them through. You do have a few questions. Um, I can't see them, so please send them to me. I'm not playing games on my, I'm not being rude. <laughs> I'm just checking all the messages that are coming through. So any other questions, please do send them. Have I missed any questions, Olivier? Do you want to ask any question? Okay, so the questions are coming through at the moment. Um, Michelle, do you add egg yolk before baking? Oh, yeah, yes. that's a good question. You put egg wash with a brush on the top before you bake. Once it's proven enough, put egg wash and you can bake. You can bake without What's egg, egg wash? wash. Just the yeah, whole egg? Yeah, can or be yolk, yolk, eggs, milk, or just yolk, or just egg, or, yeah. Oh, okay. So you, you can mix some of the inside there. And it's, we put that just for get something shiny and 
and brown, but you can bake without. So what is the difference if you put milk, yolk, color. it's just the coloration, coloration? Yeah, we put a bit of a uh, drop of milk with the yolk. Your, if yolk alone, it's, you're going to get something dark. Dark, yeah. If it's yeah. eggs, yeah. it's a bit brown and with milk, less brown. Okay. Again. Uh, Michel wants to know, what does it mean to proof? To prove, uh, over proof, you yeah. uh, To prove, yeah, well, you keep on talking about you need to prove and prove the bread. Prove, prove that's the mean you're going to get bigger shape of croissant, start the yeast and start everything inside, uh, everything inside the dough for, for, yeah. for get like all the, the shape like this with all inside and you can see it's like mm. yeast gone when it's baked. If you don't prove, you don't have, going to have this. Okay. We were saying before when we did the bread, like uh, we always use our five senses every time we do something. I think, uh, especially in the kitchen, it's essential that you follow um, a recipe, but you also have to adapt. So, yeah. um, there is a question um, from Lynette coming, and I think it's experience, it's doing it over again, and it's learning with the, the best. So, how did you master this recipe, and how do you determine how to tweak the recipe? Yeah, that's 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 true. It's a little bit same than the bread. The humidity outside will be affect affect your project at the end. But it's not exactly like the bread. We usually making croissant and just put like I say nine hundred grams of water. But you can always adjust that. But only my experience, I know if I have to put a little bit more water or a little bit less water. Mm. That's difficult. To, to say, okay, it's this when, is you feel it, when you feel it, but for, it. For, for have this recipe, I, I just spent like probably two months for get a good recipe of croissant dough, and okay. that's not very easy even for me for making croissant. Okay. Now, because the recipe is done, of course, it's easy, we just follow the yeah. recipe, that's okay, but so sometimes we still add some drop of water. Okay. Think. So did you change that recipe from when you were working in France yes. to here? So yes. conditions have been affecting? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. My recipe from France doesn't work. Doesn't but a work. lot of recipe when I make uh, pâtisserie uh, doesn't work. Yeah, it's very okay. really different. Flour, but butter, eggs, uh, meat, cream. So ingredients is, is the yeah. key factor. For you. Yes, yeah. Okay. It's, you need to change your recipe. So you adapt your recipe with yes. your ingredients. Yeah. So you basically use mostly local ingredients for everything you do here? Yes, we use local ingredients, ex <laughs> except for the bread. Okay. Right? But the rest, yeah, it's from Australia. Yeah, okay, yeah. well, that's pretty good because we used, that's where we live. So we that's... used to do the, the flour, French flour before, but like Ben said before, the baker, the flour, it's, you can find a good flour in Australia. That's, okay. yeah. yeah. We've got a few questions started to come up before um, we say thank you and goodbye. But Jerry wants to know, are you using fresh yeast or dry yeast? Yeah, fresh, fresh oh, yeast. Oh, fresh yeast. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, I've fresh. assumed dry yeast. No, fresh okay. yeast. And same, I don't know where you can find fresh yeast, except uh, in our, your bakery. But Adam's Daily. Yeah, there. Okay. Western yeah. suburbs. Oh, well, that's where I get mine anyway. Now you need to find the butter. <laughs> I don't know. Butter. Um, there is French butter in the supermarkets now, but I'm not sure that it works for that. Probably like uh, butter Isina. from Izini also. Yeah, Izini. Yeah. Izini, 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 Izini for me it's the exactly. best if you find butter from Izini. Yeah. It's probably a bit expensive, but it's very yeah. expensive. 100% if you find Izini butter, try it with that. It'll be better. Okay, just to remind people, Jerry wants to know how long do you leave the double fold folded dough in the fridge? I always try to put 30 minutes between the double and the simple turn in the fridge and one hour after the simple turn before you start to cut your croissant, one hour is okay. better. All right. And how do you tell when the croissant has proved again? Uh, that's Enough. same, that's difficult because same, if you prove too much, the dough gonna spoil inside. If you don't prove enough, it's not gonna be nice. It's gonna be flat and you're gonna taste yeast. Uh, I will say two or three hours around 28 degrees, but only me, I can see our pastry chef and every people working in the bakery can see that's now you need to bake. But yeah. Yeah, it's pretty difficult to explain. Okay. 
when you need to put in your... Well, that's why this is uh, tips and tricks from Julien, but you have to come to the masterclass in yes. October so that you can smell it, you can touch it, I and you it. can feel it because uh, I think every recipe you make, it's nice to have a book, but you really need to feel um, whatever yeah. ingredients you've got to work with. So um, one other question from Irina, uh, do you just mix together all the ingre yes. ingredients you gave us to make the first yeah. part? Always start to, to put the water, the water first on the bottom, because when you're going to mix, you're going to... Uh, it just, when if your bowl is full or almost full, everything is going to go outside. That's when you start to cook your water and after you put everything together and just start to mix, that's fine, yeah. Okay, that's right. Um, so um, I think that's it for the questions now. We, I know there's more questions. So what is the last question? Cooking. For the cooking? Uh, yeah, we forgot about I, cooking yeah. before we go. <laughs> I would say uh, at home. Here in, in the bakery, we bake at 190 degrees, but we bake like full trolley of croissant. And we bake at the 190 degrees for 20, uh, 80 minutes, 20 minutes, it depends. But at home, I would say... 180 maximum because oven at home it's a bit stronger than the one we got. 180 degrees for 15 to 18 minutes, but never open the oven if the croissant is still white and if you see it's not enough cook. Otherwise, you're going to have croissant flat for sure. Just wait. wait. Never open the oven anyway. No. Oh, you, you can open at the end or just one yeah. minute before the end, but okay. not before, otherwise. You're going to spend one day for making croissant and everything is going to be flat and not nice. Probably good taste, but not nice croissant. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to learn like this. So Julien is just waiting to see what yours croissant look like. So you can get yes. started, uh, make it happen and just hashtag the festival b &E so that we can see what your croissant look like. So I just want to thank you very much. I think um, it was fascinating to be here. Uh, we are in Lumiere Events Kitchen today. Um, they will be opening in the next few months. Um, this cooking school, so you can come for a masterclass. Uh, if not, we still have ours in October. Um, as you know, we can do the French Festival this year in July in Musgrave Park and be with you for Bastille Day. But we definitely work towards putting this together for October. So the only thing we could do virtual is the cultural conference because that's something that's easy to share with you online. But we are European, so our artists, we're sharing with you, um, drinking with you, eating with you, touching things, talking and uh, sharing. So we are looking forward to seeing you in October. And even though those uh, seminars are free of charge, um, you will um, be offered the opportunity to make a small donation just to help us uh, survive this really strange and tough year for all events. Um, so any contribution will make a huge difference. And we are looking forward to putting together masterclasses and more cultural conferences in October. Um, we also had an important call today from uh, Sardo Essentials in West End, our neighbours. Um, they will be offering um, bread proofing um, and baguette molds um, for you to be working on. So um, check your emails tomorrow because we will be picking up four people in the attendance from today's bread and croissant uh, workshops. Um, and you'll be receiving this present, um, surprising present. So thank you very much for listening. We have another super interesting webinar coming up in 15 minutes uh, where we will be talking about something really close to my heart. It's etiquette. Is that, is that redundant or relevant? Because I do believe we should have rules at the table. So anyway, we'll see you very soon and hear from Carly. See you in 15 minutes. Bye.